Hey everyone and welcome to Obi-Wan Uncloaked, where we're breaking down all those big character moments and easter eggs, how they fit into Star Wars canon, and speculating on what's to come. If you haven't seen the first two episodes, what are you doing? Go, go do that right now. But for everyone else, Let's get into it. Starting with our main hero. It's been 10 years since Revenge of the Sith. Obi-Wan has been hiding out on Tatooine depressed and ashy because there's no skincare. He hasn't used the force in a long time, buried his lightsaber in the sand, and he's trying to talk to his dead master like Yoda told him to. How to commune with him, I will teach you. It's not working yet, but more on that later. When a rogue Jedi shows up, Obi-Wan calls himself Ben. What are you doing here, Obi-Wan? My name is Ben. And that's the first time we hear him use that alias in the timeline. Oh, and a quick reminder that Obi-Wan is supposed to look like this in nine years. Say it with me. Moisturizer is your friend. Obi-Wan watches young Luke Skywalker from afar and secretly leaves him a T-16 Skyhopper model and we know Luke eventually gets it because, yeah. But in a big surprise, Obi-Wan actually spends time not with Luke, but with his twin sister Leia, played by Vivian Lyra Blair. We're first introduced to her using a decoy just like her mom in The Phantom Menace. Either choice presents great danger to us all. And they have a lot more in common too. What now? Nothing, you just remind me of someone. You Jedi are far too reckless. The Queen is not- Queen trusts my judgment, young handmaiden. You should too. You assume too much. Young Leia is smart, sassy, and very much in line with the spirited adult version of the character played by Carrie Fisher. Let's get one thing straight. I take orders from just one person, me. Hmm, so one day you're still alive. Will somebody get this big walking carpet out of my way? You don't need manners when you're talking to a lower life form. Then I guess I don't need manners when I'm talking to you. She gets kidnapped by Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, and Jimmy Smits is back as Bail Organa and reaches out to Obi-Wan, but our hero isn't keen on leaving young Luke. My wife and I will take the girl. I will take the child and watch over him. So they're each in charge of a twin. Y'all, this is literally the parent trap. <gasps> Obi-Wan decides to go, and at the planet Dayu, we're met with a cameo from Tamura Morrison, aka THE Boba Fett, as a homeless Clone War vet. Help a veteran get a warm meal. We've seen him play a version of the character in Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, Very good, sir. The Mandalorian, and The Book of Boba Fett. Back to Leia, no wonder she was so calm in A New Hope. She's been through a kidnapping before, and now we know why she really wanted help from Obi-Wan Kenobi. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. She knows him personally, and Obi-Wan finally uses the Force to save young Leia's life, and that's the beginning of real trust between them, which lasts for the next decade. I'm here with Ben Kenobi. Ben Kenobi? Where is he? Come on. And it goes way beyond that. Ben! Now we have to talk about the bad guys, aka the Inquisitors, and I'm just gonna say it. Reva, aka the third sister, is a black woman being gaslit by her co-workers. They hunt and kill all remaining Jedi, but both the Grand Inquisitor and Fifth Brother repeatedly critique her methods, claiming she's doing too much as if that's not their entire job. You are reckless. They're basically saying, dial it back, you're making us look bad. You are too impulsive. But Reva has her own methods, like the Star Wars tradition of dismembering someone. We're not under the Empire. <laughs> And she has Leia kidnapped, which draws out Obi-Wan. When she has him right where she wants him, here comes the Grand Inquisitor trying to take credit for her work. I will take Kenobi in myself. But Reva was having none of that and stabs him in the gut with her lightsaber. But was that a death blow? There are some things far more frightening than death. We know he's alive years later in Star Wars Rebels, so it's unlikely that she actually killed him. Now let's speculate on something else, because we know that Reva is hyper-focused on Obi-Wan and it feels personal. At the beginning of the series, we see a group of younglings escaping Order 66. Could the first one we see, and here she is again. What do we do now? We run. Could that be young Reva? After all, most of the Inquisitors are former Jedi, and if it is her, she's probably blaming Obi-Wan for what happened. But Reva also wants to impress Darth Vader, who is looking to reunite with his former master. Plus, she gets the honor of revealing that Anakin is still alive. Anakin Skywalker is alive. Q 
cute Obi-Wan looking devastated, and then we're left with this final haunting image of Vader in the Bacta tank. It's giving serious Hannibal Lecter vibes, and honestly, I'm creeped out. Love your suit. So where do we go from here? Well, we know that reunion is coming. The main reason is when we started really looking at Obi-Wan's life and saying, who's important in his life, what meant something to him. So much of that connects back to Anakin and Vader that it felt very organic that it would be part of this series. Plus, like I said, Obi-Wan has been trying to FaceTime Qui-Gon, but that hasn't been working out. That has to pay off before the series is over, right? Are we headed toward a Liam Neeson cameo? What did you all think of Obi-Wan Kenobi's first two episodes? Head over to TVLine.com for my full recap and let us know your thoughts in the comments. For TVLine.com, I'm Keisha Hatchett.